You know what's going on, man. New Year, more tight moon. It's a movie. Now, before we get off into it, I will say that I'm going to refrain from believing that they baited us because there's still information coming out on these announcements. But in the meantime, we did come out with a few W's, one of them being another trailer for Witch on the Holy Night. So for all the people who don't know, and I've brought up Mahoyo before, this is that same series. Mahoyo being short for Mahotsukai no Yoru, which is the full name before is translated. This is the story that centers around the Aozaki sisters, Toko and her sister Alko. Alko being the main protagonist here. Of course, it is all Type Moon related, so it's in the same verse as Fate, it's in the same verse as Karno Kyokai, Tsukihime. All of these things share common elements, but they have different driving factors to the main points in their story. As far as Mahoyo goes, this story is actually the first canonically in the timeline which is funny because the original novel didn't come out until 2012 so it actually was published last in terms of having access to it it takes place back in the 1980s but this should come as no surprise we all know type moon is a big fan of putting things out out of order as you can clearly see with fate still don't have a fate route by the way it's pretty uniform at this point so no surprise there this trailer is amazing don't let anybody tell you different i know the elitists are gonna pop out and make a big deal about everything they're already saying that alco is looking like a wren clone let us just have nice things all right they want to blow it up before we even start but it looks good it looks accurate as i mentioned in the other video type moon is always on point with the music that doesn't surprise me at all and we're going to go through some of the shots from the trailer just to gloss over what's happening in case people wanted to know we talked a lot about alco and toko's power in terms of where they stand in the verse you know i've already mentioned that they're some of the most formidable mages in the verse just based on their design but we never really got into their story and how they got there. So at the time of Mahoyo, the idea was, and you guys already know that with a mage family, only one person can inherit the crest, usually. And you see how that turned out with the Tosuka family and how that ended up splitting up Ren and Sakura. Well, this is following a very similar format where you have these two sisters and only one can get chosen as the heir. And the person that was supposed to get the magic crest was Toko. She had trained her entire life in order to do so. Lo and behold, right before their grandfather passed away, he pulled the switcheroo and said, actually, you know what? I think Alko would be a better fit for the crest. And this pretty much left Toko to bite the dust in terms of inheritance. Now she's hella mad because she's feeling like, you know, you built me up all this time to get this and then it's time for me to get it and now you're giving it away. And on the flip side, you have Alko who was largely just living a normal life. And now she has to play catch up to Toko and just a couple of years but since she does have great potential it does allow her to figure out things in her own way to a certain degree and again it is done by ufotable gorgeous visuals as usual it's been a while though the last films that we had from ufotable was heaven's field and it may not seem like it but that's been a long time now so it's good to see them back doing some tight moon work when you first open up the trailer this is in fact the kuanji mansion this is where majority of the story takes place and this isn't Alko's mansion, this is actually the estate of a friend to the Aozaki family, the Meinsters. And since the Meinsters and the Aozakis were locked in, they've been cool since the Meinsters moved over to Japan. The Aozakis gained their favor and Alko ended up being sent over to the mansion in order to expedite her training. Reason being is that the descendant for the Meinsters is Alice. Love Alice, by the way. And Alice is a witch. And this is something unlike anything that we've seen before in tight moon really because there's not a lot of priority to witches so she does specialize in witchcraft and she has access to spells that are over a thousand years old i would say that her greatest strength is that she's super versatile she has power in numbers but more than that she has a lot of knowledge that'll help alco fill in the gap so they've been working together and in the meantime you have toko who has come back for revenge for being abandoned by the family by her grandfather essentially the problem is 
is the entire town where Mahoyo takes place, Masaki Town, is surrounded by a bounded field. And the Awazakis are the ones that have authority over the ley lines. Inside of this barrier, it goes straight back into the Magic Crest. So there's nothing that Toko can do in terms of reaching the route realistically until she's able to eliminate the markers that keep up this field. And that's what she's been working on. So when the scene comes up in the trailer where they're going off into the night, Alko and Alice go out to the park in order to lure out Toko because Toko hitting these markers are now affecting the ley lines and it's messing with the Aozaki's magical influence. They go out to the park and Toko doesn't come herself. She actually sends one of her puppets. So when you see Alko turn around like she's surprised, that's what she saw. She saw one of Toko's puppets and immediately fried it, hoping that it was her. Mind you that neither one of them know that she's come back and she's hitting these markers they just know that somebody's doing it. The issue with her destroying the puppet is that somebody's been trailing them. Somebody saw them. And in the world of mages, where you're supposed to keep the mystery intact, somebody else seeing you deploy your spells just out and about is an issue. And the person that saw all of this was Sojiro. Sojiro is actually a trained combatant that used to live up in the mountains. He comes from a special group that used to be trained to fight off beasts. But other than that, he's just a normal human. But despite the fact of him being human, he he does have this unique affinity for mysticism. So when Alice and Alko were out in the night, even though Alice actually put a barrier around them in order to stop the average person from seeing, Sojiro still saw through it. And since they realized that he found out, they had to get rid of him. So that's what you see later on in the trailer. This time they go to Kisi Land, which by the time that the story comes around is an abandoned theme park. They end up luring Sojiro out. He runs into the house of mirrors and that's the person that you see Alko chasing down relentlessly. Little does she know that behind her, she is also being chased by another one of Toko's puppets, even more proficient than the one that she went against before because the puppet itself was in a way modeled after Alko. So it's a lot better than the normal ones that Toko uses. So while she's trying to chase down Sojiro, she ends up getting whacked in her circuits by the puppet. And this puts her in a bad state to the point where she ends up cutting a deal with Sojiro saying we got to team up until I figure this out with the puppet and that's how they end up becoming a group as a matter of fact it's a lot like the beginning of stay night with Shiro and Ren it follows a very similar format hey I can't take this person on by myself you can't take them on by yourself either let's just figure it out together for the time being and that time being just ends up as something that's pushed to the side one thing to point out about Sojiro is that he actually has a very similar Similar background to Kazuki, the one that teaches at Hamurohara in Fate, the one that Saber fought against. He also was trained in the village, but in his case, it was to be an assassin. And so they have these formats that relate to each other. So you could see Sojiro as the prototype to him, or just somebody that came from that same background. They were raised in these villages as people that were fostered. You get to the end of the trailer, and this actually really surprised me the way that they did this. They gave us a lot. And it shows Alko, you know, tapping into her magic crest and using the merits of having that Aozaki background instilled in her. This has a lot of different variations. The one that we see in the trailer is just one of many, but her whole thing at the time was that she didn't want to go all the way into the true magic. So she overloaded herself. She overloaded her circuits and her crest as much as she possibly could to fire off her shots. You have all this red and blue electricity. And again, it looks fantastic. My thing is I was just surprised that they didn't make any cuts in the sequence. Usually when they do trailers like this, they give you just enough, but here it's like they just played it all the way through to let you know what you're actually getting. And there's so much to the scene and what happens after it that while it might seem like it's a lot, there's still a lot going on on the other side. Too much for it to even make a difference. So the reason why she's even firing her gun in the first place is because Alice is pissed off. You know, despite her being cool with Alco before, despite their family's mutual agreements, she still follows that witch background at heart. She takes it very serious. So when Alco spared Sojiro, she was like, oh, I'm just gonna have to kill both of y'all then. <laughs> 
and she was not joking. She is really on that. So Alice, and the reason why her name is Alice is because she has this Alice in Wonderland type background where the majority of her spells are of the same nature. They're very otherworldly. And more than just her being a witch and having these witches in her background, her ancestor, Yumina, actually used the first true magic. So her bloodline has a lot going on for them. And with that in mind, Alice has all types of unique spells and familiars that she can deploy that have been passed down to her. One of them being Flat Snark. This is the vial that you see her holding and toss up when the shot is aimed on her. That vial contains the stomach fat of an actual god, and it literally starts to manifest as a bounded field that brings the area to life. It brings the amusement park to life. So instead of the amusement park being abandoned, she's being attacked by it. And Flat Snark is pretty much this oil that hangs up in the air behind these green clouds, but the base of it revolves around the moon. You would have to have enough power and reserves to even be able to shoot it down, which in the case of most mages, this would already be GG's. So that is the root of the end sequence where you see Alko shooting this huge magical bullet into the air. She literally risked her life over overloading her circus in order to take Flat Snark down because if she didn't, they both were going to die. <laughs> she had to it was a high cost to even be there in the first place so she might as well right as far as mahoyo goes they did just put the novel out on steam a couple of weeks ago so if you wanted to check that out you can it's also on consoles it's also on here in terms of when the movies actually come out because it's definitely way too long for it to just be one it has to be at least two they might even push three the same way that they did with heaven's field doesn't necessarily need three but i could see why from an adaptation standpoint you will want to have that extra space and you guys already know how that goes with the multiple movies if there's only two then you know that scenes are going to get cut if there's three then the pacing is more than likely going to be weird unless the directing is just actually perfect and how many times does that happen so it's a real toss up in the air when you get into things like that there was a demo that came out a while back and it ended around the part where flat snark showed up so it's looking like they're shooting for this to be the climax of that first movie before they move into the second half with Alice taking Sojuro in, them finally going against Toko, and Alko finally tapping into that fifth magic. And I've done a whole video about that. That pretty much covers all the ending right then and there. It's a great story and it leans a lot more on slice of life. That's one of the big things why a certain part of the fandom like it so much because it shows that different aspect of Nasu's writing. When he decides to highlight that more, it does become a completely different story. And that's why things like the banter between Alko, Sojuro, and the people that they go to school with or just scenes like her going down to answer the phone in her pajamas come off as such a big deal no matter how small it might seem. No release dates as of now but we will be waiting a lot of people complaining about them not keeping the original designs from koyama that's the designer that did the art in the novel itself as you can see it leans more to a Takeuchi art style as it usually does when they do any foldable work but it's not a surprise that people will feel some type of way after wanting the character for so long now this really isn't a problem if they were going to go for that they would have chose a whole different studio i would have preferred if they kept the original but just because it's Takeuchi's doesn't mean that it's bad for the most part it really only comes to be an issue for certain characters like alko i really think she looks a lot more like asuka from Kora no Kiyoka, but everybody else kind of stands on their own in terms of design, so it doesn't really matter. You know, people like Beowulf. Nobody from Tight Moon Animated looks like Beowulf, so it's not gonna be a problem. It's just a problem for Alko because she happens to look like Ren. And that, of course, again, goes into that prototype-ish format. The characters that come after them, Ren, Kazuki, they're gonna have similar aspects.